everybody, I'm Dr. Mark Stengler, and joining me today is my friend, Dr. Gio Espinosa, well-known, a holistic, naturopathic doctor, focuses on men's health. Uh, we've been interviewing him on different subjects in regards to men's health, and so this is one of the many videos, and this is a very important one, prostate cancer. Uh, most men have a fear of that in America, with good reason, it's very, very common, but Dr. Gio has been very unique, in my opinion, amongst all the doctors I know in that he takes a patient perspective, starting from step one, maybe got some symptoms, some lab test abnormalities, walking the patient through, and doctors, by the way, we use his kind of his algorithms too to help guide people, patients, to get the right diagnosis and treatment, walk them through what they should be looking for, what things mean, how to assess properly, and, and get the best treatment. So thank you, Dr. Gio, for uh, joining us. Hey, thank you for having me here, Mark. I appreciate it. Well, it's a huge topic, and we could, of course, spend hours talking about it, but again, it is true. You've done some very unique work as an integrative doctor, understanding both conventional medicine, diagnostics and treatments, the holistic nutritional side of things, merging the two together, so yeah. people can be helped the best in terms of safety and efficacy. So maybe walk us through how you help so many patients out, which, by the way, uh, people can access Dr. Geo Telemedicine. Go to drgeo.com to get more information. He's at NYU Langone Medical Center. He sees patients there as well. So you help a lot of men with prostate issues, including prostate cancer. So yeah, walk us through how you really help these people, why so many men seek out your help, because you're unique in this way. Yeah, so a, a patient that would come to see me or you um, with this is a patient that has a high PSA, and his doctor is recommending a biopsy, and they're trying to avoid a biopsy if they can. So they're coming to us for us to kind of guide them, guide them through that process. So a typical scenario, let's just say 58 year old man, PSA of 5.3, just pulling that number out of the air. Um, and they're saying, hey, my doctor's recommending a biopsy. I don't want one. Can you help me figure this out, <laughs> right? And the reason why people don't want a biopsy is because First of all, who wants a, ro a rod up their rectum with needles going through their rectum to, and poking the prostate? Like, nobody wakes up in the morning and say, man, I can't wait to get my biopsy today. Right. You know, I mean, it's painful and things like that. Okay, great. The other thing is because they're reading on the internet that there's seeding that can occur where now prostate cancer can spread from the biopsy itself. I'd rather not get into whether that's true or not, um, because that's beyond what we're trying to focus on here. The bottom line is that if a patient or a person or a person is trying to figure out if they really have prostate cancer, there is no other way than through a prostate biopsy. So either you don't care and you, you're in denial, which is fine with me if you want to be in denial and not get a biopsy, as long as you make a, an informed decision, or if you really want to know, there's only one way to know, and that's through a prostate biopsy. So that's the first thing. All right. But we, we do know, and, we ha and you have seen on the internet, and everybody listening to this, um, uh, this video has seen on the internet that, hey, PSA is poor to screen for prostate cancer. Most people don't need a, a biopsy. Most people who get prostate cancer die from it. They don't die with it. So why are we doing all this for that's not false information. People are getting overly biopsied, for sure. And I think that any urologist would agree to that. It's not my opinion, it's a fact. The question is, who is the person that actually needs a biopsy? Because if we find cancer in that, in that biopsy, the cancer that we find may be completely treated successfully if found early enough, right? right? So I'm not interested in finding prostate cancer that's indolent, that you'll never die from it. I'm interested in only finding prostate cancer that can be significant in the type and stage of cancer that they have. And if they do a treatment with that, with what they have, they're actually going to survive from it and hopefully thrive after it if they do a bunch of other things, right? So that's a focus. That being said, what needs to happen is, and you know, I have a book coming out shortly on the PSA test. Everything you wanna know on the PSA test. 
Why did I find that I needed to write this book? Because everybody's freaking out about the PSA tests. That's why, yeah. right? PSA, you know, what does it stand for? Patient stimulated anxiety, <laughs> right? That's what it stands for. It's not prostate specific antigen. Patient stimulating, everybody is anxious over it. So everybody needs to calm down and kind of do things in order. So what's, what does that look like? All right, PSA, what did we, we said 58 year old guy, 5.3. All right, so then we look at that absolute value of the PSA would not drive me to say you need a biopsy. I have to look at the, you know, three or four value and see how's that, how that's changed, right? So that, that alone would not prompt me to get a biopsy. I have to then do, we would recommend a imaging of the prostate that gives me their, the size of the prostate. So then we could do a, a, a PSA density calculation. That's a simple calcu division calculation of you know, PSA number value over size. Anything above 0 0.1, 0 0.15, is suggestive of prostate cancer. Anything below 0 0.15, 0 0.1 is suggestive of an enlarged prostate. So I'm more, uh, I'm more confident in saying, hey, okay, maybe we don't need a biopsy right now because your PSA density is 0 0.07 for argument's sake. Yeah. Right. When you get a PSA, you also get a, a percentage-free PSA score next to it. Most people order it together. That there's a lot of false positives with with a percentage PSA, but if that per, the lower that percentage number, the higher the likelihood of there being prostate cancer there. So the cutoff there is about 25 percent. Higher than 25 percent, not likely to be prostate cancer. Lower, more likely to be prostate cancer. But if the percentage is 23 percent, that doesn't really scare me. If the percentage, the percentage-free PSA of 8%, that's really low, right? So now yeah. we look at PSA velocity, PSA kinetics, how PSA changes within time. If it's linearly gone up, that's not good. If it's gone up and down, maybe that's fine. We look at PSA density, we look at PSA, uh, free PSA percentage, right? The totality of that information helps me help the person. Right. Lastly, Let's say, um, so I still don't know. Okay, we order a blood test called a 4K score. The 4K score uses different types of PSAs from the prostate. They have an algorithm that's patented and it gives you a score, 8.5, 7.5, whatever. That is more sensitive to prostate cancer than PSA. So if the number is higher than 7.5, there's likely prostate cancer there. If it's lower than 7.5, there's is less likely for there to be prostate cancer. So I look at the total picture. I do a physical exam, check the prostate. And once I gather all that information, I'm able to say, you know what? We don't need a prostate here. Likely your BPH, uh, your uh, PSA of 5.3 in this 58-year-old man is likely from an enlarged prostate. Or no, all, everything is indicating that you might have prostate cancer that we need to pay attention to. So I think we need a biopsy. And that's it, that's it. But just a number by itself, oh, 5.3 biopsy? No, no, that's, that's not the way to do it. Yeah, that's great. So we're using different parameters, doing a, a better assessment, inferring to the patient, you know, again, like you said, probably a very low probability got prostate cancer, maybe a moderate or a high. So helps the patient to make a better decision, not just rush into things and perhaps yeah. get, you know, certain uh, side effects and things like that. Yep, that's right. Okay. Well, Dr. Jill, that's great. Now, you have a book, uh, a very good book on the subject. I actually have it on my bookshelf. Uh, it's called Thrive. Uh, let's see. You got a few so, books. This one is Thrive, Thrive Don't, Don't Only Survive, right? That's the, that's the prostate cancer book. Look, yes. Mark, I'm trying to catch up to you with the volume of books that you've written. <laughs> I'm way behind. So I'm really working hard here, man. I'm really working hard here. But the prostate cancer book is Thrive, Don't Only Survive, 
and it's like Dr. Geo died uh, to live uh, how to how to yeah your best life before, before and, and after cancer. prostate cancer yeah. yeah yeah and then your new PSA book how are people going to get that are they obviously go to drgeo.com drgeo.com yeah, right yeah drgeo.com drgeo is the hub and all the information is it will always be there so yeah that's a PSA book. And I know you're also available uh, because you're in New York, but you're available for telemedicine consults yeah. uh, with men around the country. Are you not? Correct. I pretty much see men from all over the world at this point. And, uh, I, and it's all that information is also on drgeo.com. Thanks so much for mentioning Oh, yeah. It. Thank you for your time. Thank you.